Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, I'm Jack Toffer. I'm a black belt under David Kama, um, Hicks and Gracie's second American black belt. Friends with Professor Ryan. Um, they asked me to do a video and just a little talk on my opinion on um, training and more specifically on um, positional sparring versus free rolling. I think most students, generally speaking, they like to just do free rolling because it's fun and you get to do crazy positions, you end up in bad positions, you get to use your dominant skill and you get to play your game. And that's a lot of fun and I think it's good for learning transitions and things like that. But if you think about it, um, how many transitions do you do in one uh, five minute roll, 10 minute roll? There's probably like 60 different transitions. You mounted, he escaped, you're in half guard, you take him back, he escapes that. You scramble, you're on your knees, then you're on the back, and then you're maybe turtle position, and then you put the guy, now you're cross side, and now you're half guard, then you get cross side again, you mount, he rolls you over, and now you're inside his guard. And that can happen all in one training session. And then, uh, let's say he's got a really good guard, and he catches you in an arm bar. So if you think about it, all of those things happened. It was a really competitive, fast roll. What did you learn? Not a lot. I mean, you got exercise, you trained, and you got the feeling, but you didn't really focus on any one particular skill set. There's benefits to that, like cardio and maybe timing and things, but if you, if you have a really, really good half guard, or you have a really, really good guard, you roll, you bump hands, and boom, you pull guard. You get a guy in your closed guard, and you have a devastating sweep, you got a gnarly arm bar and triangle, and uh, you got nice setups, and you catch most of the people with that. So you perfected that skill, but then next time you roll, in the next round, you get put with someone else, boom, you pull guard. So you get some guys with purple belt guards, and they have a white belt mount, and they got maybe a blue belt uh, passing game, and they kind of just focus on their one thing, and they get really, really good at one thing, but then the rest of their game diminishes. And it's really easy to do, and I'm actually particularly guilty of it, throughout my career. Another way to train, another way to do it, is you pick a position. So I think it's important for instructors to, they'll do the class, they'll do the moves, maybe you did a bunch of cross side moves. But then you do positional sparring. You just say, okay, Greg, you're on the bottom, Jack, you're on top, and we're just gonna do 15 minutes of Greg on the bottom and Jack on top. This actually happened with a different uh, student of mine, actually. Let's roll, uh, you're on your back right here. I'm cross side on him. As the instructor, we actually did a free roll, but I was able to dictate the position. So I just kept going. I wanted to see his bottom escape game, right? So he didn't know I was doing positional sparring with him, but I ended up cross side on him. So we're here, and he puts his hand under here this way, and then I had a perfect setup, boom, and I finished with the, the uh, cross collar choke, or I mean, a paper cutter choke. We reset, so reset. This and that, he goes to pull guard. I somehow pass, we're here again. He's scrambling, boom, he puts his arm under, boom. I did the same thing. He was like, oh man, that was twice. We reset, same thing, pass his guard, go cross side on him here. He puts it under, bang, like that. And then he stopped and he goes, you caught that on me three times in a row. I'm like, I did. And he goes, what did I do? And I asked him, what did you do? He goes, well, I was going to escape like this, and then you grab my arm. I go, exactly. So he goes, oh, I got to watch out. When my arm comes like that, you might grab under it. I'm like, that's right. And then we actually, I taught him about the position and how to avoid that mistake. But if we would have rolled, just continued to free roll, maybe I would have mounted him and cross collar choked him, took his back, you know, foot locked him, guillotined him, and whatever. And he didn't necessarily walk away with any improvement in skill. Which is good too if you're an instructor or if you're just a, an aware student, maybe you want to pick your worst spot, you know, for the, the day. Like, I suck at mount escapes. So I'll just have him like, hey, mount me, finish me. And then I just work mount escapes for a half hour or maybe the whole night. But I get different body styles and I can work my two or three escapes over and over and over again. And then I'll actually really, really learn. I think the first time I was introduced to this was um, I got my blue belt. I started in like 95, and uh, I started with Pedro Sauer, and like maybe 96, somewhere right around there. And I don't know that we did a ton of positional sparring at that time, but in 2000, I met uh, Dave Kama out here in California, and every Saturday we'd go up and train at Hickson's, and Hickson 
we'd have a, a nice good class, you know, good warm up, solid technique, and then we would do uh, positional sparring. And sometimes, I forget what they call it, but you'd have a guy down there cross side, a guy down here cross side, and then a guy down there, like all on bottom cross side, and then they would rotate, and the guys on top would just either try to um, sweep or submit or whatever, and the guy on the bottom, if he got mounted or submitted, he lost, and then he'd go to the end of the line. But we'd just keep that position, and it was really good competitive training. But that's a version of positional sparring. Hickson got so highly evolved at each of the positions is because he just drilled it over and over and over and over. Now he knows every nuance there is to the mountain. He knows exactly where your weight's supposed to be, how tight or loose your, loose your knees are supposed to be, how high or low your hips are supposed to be. If you should be hunching forward, you should be upright. And he's got it all figured out because he's done thousands of hours of specific mount drilling. And on the other hand, um, it was really funny. I was at the, when he got his uh, last belt promotion, um, during the seminar, he was going over uh, mount escapes. And so he picked this uh, highly competitive big dude. I think the guy was probably like 230, 240, uh, third or fourth degree black belt. Um, I had a feeling, I didn't know the guy, but I have a feeling he was a, used to be a beast competitor. And he's like, hey, my friend, you know, come here, come mount me. And he goes, okay, do an elbow escape, escape. And the guy like floundered and floundered and floundered and floundered. And he was just kept trying to do it. And Hickson goes, you know, let, let's, let's restart. Do it again. And he was under the bottom of it and was just trying to get out, trying to get out, trying to get out. And Hickson goes, okay, so now let's switch. So the guy mounted him. He goes, you ready? And Hickson got out of the mount. And, and the whole place laughed. And the guy was like, what the heck just happened? And he goes, it was probably an accident. You obviously weren't ready. Let's do it again. The guy mounted him. Literally half a second, Hickson was out of the mount. The guy was just I was mind blown, you know, the typical saying. The point is, is that Hickson worked those escapes specifically a thousand times to where he knows it inside and out. And, but he's done that over the course of his career, so he knows each position that well. But I think if you just free rolled all the time or just sparred all the time, you're not gonna develop that super high level of understanding on a specific position, and that's just my opinion. Another way to do the positional sparring, when Hickson was teaching up at Crohn's um, two years ago, three years ago, he was teaching um, a class on Monday and Wednesday three years ago, and then. Two years ago, it was just on uh, Wednesdays. But sometimes he would, he would teach a full class, do a warm up, it was like an hour long class, good technique obviously. And then he goes, okay guys, mount escapes for a half hour. And it was like, we just looked at each other, it was like, oh. And uh, he would be on the bottom, and for 15 minutes he was just working on mount escapes. Guess what that made me good at? That made me good at mount attacks and him good at um, escapes, right? And then we switched, the same thing. I was on the bottom for 15 minutes. He kind of got a good understanding because um, he knew the things that I did to him that he didn't like when he was on the bottom. So it actually taught him, one, how to escape better, and then two, how to have a better mount. You know, like, God, every time I tried to go this way, he turned my face, or he did this. So then when we switched roles, he could use his newfound skill set on me, um, you know, on top. So I started doing the same thing, and then he can cross face me or do whatever he needs to do to, to get out. It's really good to just positional spar. And to tell you the truth, you can get a hardcore uh, cardio workout. Escaping mount over and over and over again is uh, can be difficult. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, do you have anything to chime in on? Do you want to say anything? This is perfect. Okay, cool. All right, well, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, uh, you know how to reach us. And uh, thank you very much.